Hi there, this is Luisa Heinzel. Thank you very much for joining me today. The last days I have thought about eco-dying. If you don't know what eco-dying is, let me show you some results that I could get on these papers here with this method. And let me quickly explain what that is and a few facts around eco-dying. So this paper, of course, <laughs> looks really, really gorgeous. You can get really, really amazing results with this eco-dying method. The main idea behind that is to make a sandwich out of paper and plants and then you um, let that simmer in a mixture out of water, vinegar and alum and that process takes a really long time until you get these results and for my nose <laughs> it's not so nice, meaning this eco-dyeing method has a relatively bad smell. And if you want to do that in your apartment, for example, you would have to live with this smell. And I thought, can we perhaps get a similar effect like we have here, but without this really time-consuming method of eco-dyeing, without this smell, without all of this waiting time? And then I thought, perhaps that is also possible with my method of using distress oxide inks on matte photo paper for inkjet printers. I have uploaded several different videos about this method. This method has also some other good things. For example, that the results are waterproof, even if they are made with a, with a water-soluble medium. Oxide ink is water soluble, soluble norm, normally. Holy moly, <laughs> I can't speak today. Um, and I have made different experiments and I thought it must be possible to get this really, really loose effect of the eco dyeing as well with this method. So that's what I want to try together with, with you today. And a thing that I want to mention is... I found out that this photo paper from this brand, Photo Paper Direct, works the best for me. I have tried out several different other brands. Um, this is matte photo paper, so it has a special matte surface that is made for printing photos. And this says it's made for inkjet printers. I have tried several different other brands for inkjet printers and I have also tried other brands for laser printers because you have asked me if that is possible as well. They all worked, even those for the laser printers, but yeah, perhaps it's a personal taste thing, but I like this from Photo Paper Direct the best. I will link this paper down below for you in the description box so that you can find that easier. I have the paper here. I've already cut that down. So I've just made four pieces out of one so that I can use these end results later as a base, a background or something for a card, for example, and use that as a journaling card or a greeting card or something like that. I also have <clears throat> some leaves here that I have already dried, uh, pressed and yeah, with that they got dry. I think these are made out of fabric. I'm not totally sure. So I have these, some ginkgo leaves and these hydrangea petals. I hope that's the right word. But that really doesn't matter what you have. If you don't have real plants, then you could also use some made out of fabric or you could even use any other material <laughs> and when I say any other material I mean everything that wouldn't fall apart when it comes in uh, contact with water yeah so you could even use those plastic leaves that you know perhaps from Halloween decoration or Christmas decoration or something you could um, use die cuts you could use uh, for example also pieces of thin lace or something like that but I have chosen this because I wanted to see what happens if I stay as close to the original process of eco dyeing as possible we will boil no water here today. I will um, 
put no vinegar and alum to my uh, pieces here, but I wanted to have the leaves so that I can compare the results the best. Yeah, If I would use some butterfly die cuts, for example, I couldn't compare um, the results. I hope that makes sense. So um, let me put these away and let me show you what is underneath those leaves because this is really helpful and you need something like this. So this is just an acrylic plate. These are um, the grid blocks by Tim Holtz. Um, these come in a pack of nine and there are several different sizes. It really doesn't matter that you have exactly these, but it's helpful to have something where you can look through something that is transparent. If you have these blocks, then please make sure that you check um, which side of the block you use. Can you hear this? This grid is like a little slot on one side of the plate and it's completely flat on the other side. You want to use this flat side, otherwise you get really not so nice patterns on your prints because this here makes a pattern as well on our print later. And I also have taken out some Distress Oxide ink refillers. You could do this whole thing um, with the ink pads as well. So with the Distress ink pads and also the Distress Oxide ink pads, you could just use the ink pads and press them to an acrylic plate, for example, and then spritz a tiny little bit of water and use the ink that you have there. But I have to say, it's not so nice. I mean, it's not so handy. And also the result is not so impressive than with the refillers. And the same thing is with the difference between the Distress Ink and the, dis the Distress Oxide Ink. The Oxide Ink makes way more bam results. You will see that in a second, what I mean. <laughs> so let's put, no, not let's not put them away. Luise, what are you doing? So let's take both of these out for a moment because I want to talk about the colors that I have chosen here. Um, on the original prints, I got some really crazy yellowish, greenish yellow colors. Then this like more muddy green. Um, here, this was a fern that I have put onto the paper that has a really light green. Uh, if you want to hear my honest opinion, I don't like this green. So I haven't searched for a green that is similar to this because I don't like it. But I have some colors that are really, really gorgeous. Look here, for example. And I have tried to take out, <clears throat> to take out some uh, colors that are close to that. So that are speckled egg, weathered, <laughs> weathered wood, <laughs> bundled sage, forest moss and crushed olive for this more like greenish, green, yellowish, bluish gray. <laughs> and I have taken out wild honey for this more brighter yellow. Um, and then I have some ground espresso here. Uh, perhaps you think, oh, that's very dark. Yes, it is. But we will need that for a very special reason. But you could also take any other color combinations, of course. You will see that during the video that it really doesn't matter which colors you use because you will get gorgeous results anyway. And because it's not so important, <laughs> I have taken out <clears throat> these colors as well. This is Crackling Campfire and this is Uncharted Mariner. I have already used this for the German video and I know that it is gorgeous and I want to try this. <laughs> you know, I have to record two videos after each other and it's always the same thing with me. When I have finished the first video, <laughs> then I think, oh, that was great. What could I make better? And what else could I do with this technique? And then, yeah, <laughs> you have to live with that, that I'm experimenting even more than I have originally planned. So let's take this plate here. I will again check that this is the smooth side of this plate and not the side where these uh, slots are. And then I put them to my table here and I take my first piece of paper and some water and I will spritz a little bit of water to the plate to make the paper stick here. <clears throat> 
like this and then I will make this really 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 wet and when I say really wet I mean really wet and now I have to put this out of the way otherwise my bottles get wet as well I don't want that so the water has to stay on the paper um, like you know it's raining outside and you get these what's the name is it puddle I guess so when this is really really wet I take the first leaf here and I don't know how to show that in the camera like this perhaps and then I will start with the first colors let's first take speckled egg weathered wood and bundled sage and let's stay in a little bit more like muted color palette if you if you uh, have these oxide refillers then please make sure that you shake them really well before you start so that everything in the bottle gets mixed really well and then we are going to put just a few little drops here to the leaf and if you have pressed leaves like I have here you will realize that those drops stay on the leaf be careful that you don't throw the ink through your room because this could roll off from the uh, leaf so make sure that you carry that very carefully to your paper now because look they are staying like little like like they were beads or something i mean doesn't this look just cute it's just it's just so cool yeah so when we have that we can carefully but quickly turn that around and place this here <clears throat> press that down a little bit if you are afraid about ink on your hands then please wear some gloves because this is a little bit messy and when you have that pressed down take a second piece of paper make this wet turn the wet side towards the leaf just like this and place that on top try to not move anything around because you want to have the leaf really there where it is now then take a brayer if you can find it out here <laughs> take a brayer or something similar and roll over this you can also take this ink that's coming out there and just roll it to this paper here that gives a nice additional effect in the end you want to make sure that these uh, papers are like soaking the ink and are sticking together a little bit <coughs> so next let's take perhaps these hydrangea leaves and let's go on with another color combination I'm taking forest moss and I want to have some crushed olive and I guess that this is relatively intensive so I want to have a lot of that <laughs> I mean when I say a lot then I mean yeah this amount it's only a few drops it's I mean this bottle lasts forever yeah so uh, that is really not the problem where is my here take some tweezers and take that and perhaps you want uh, to think about where to place these before you put them here and oh we need some more water of course you want to have this wet as well now so every layer that you make has to be really wet before you put the plants on so I'm taking this turn that around relatively quickly because if I would turn that slowly, I mean, I can do it. Can you see that? Then now it doesn't happen. What is that? Normally, normally the ink uh, falls to the paper when you turn it too slowly. But yeah, <laughs> not in this case. Ah, uh, here, can you see that? And that could leave a really not so nice pattern in the end. So uh, I want to make sure that I have no no drops of ink that are falling to my paper so let's make this wet and put that on here 
Brea. And if you have something like mud on your Brea, just get rid of it by rolling it over a paper towel or something. You don't want to mix the colors up too much. Yeah, When you have a nice color like this green, you can just make it like this and you will have it here. But you don't want to have this like muddy brownish mixture. I mean, that can look great as well. No question. But <laughs> um, yeah. So next, let's perhaps take some of these ginkgo leaves and wild honey and crackling campfire and I'm really excited what will happen with these because I haven't tried them Whew, I haven't tried them for the German video so this is the first time that I'm using the ginkgo leaves. These drops are <laughs> so cool. Yeah. Absolutely crazy. So before we turn them around here and put them there, let's put some more water here. How do I want that? Perhaps we can make something like a little half circle with these. Ugh. Oh no. If something happens like this, you want to put the leaf exactly there where the ink is. Um, otherwise you will get a round, really not so nice shape. And perhaps you're wondering why I'm putting the ink to the leaf and not to the paper. Um, that is relatively easy to explain because if you would drop the ink directly to the paper, you would get a round impression here. The ink can't spread so well. I don't know why that is because, I mean, the ink comes to the paper on the leaf as well in like a drop shape. Uh, but I have tried it out to put uh, the ink first and then the leaf because that would, of course, be very, very easy. Way easier than this method, but that doesn't work so well. Here I have mud, so I will just take that off. You could also take that off with a piece of scrap paper or something to don't waste the ink that's coming out here. Then you would have some nice collage fodder, but for this video I'm doing it like this. <clears throat> then we can add some more water and add this leaf. Ooh! <laughs> have you seen that? <laughs> oh my goodness. What is that? This, this doesn't work so well. With these ginkgo leaves are so slippery, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's see. So perhaps we can also, now I know that the ink is only here below the leaf, yeah? Normally I wouldn't put additional ink on top of the leaf because that's not necessary. The ink is so much that it goes around the whole leaf and makes impressions on this side and on this side of the next paper. Um, but I want to make sure that here is enough ink and I know that here is only below the ink is now only below the left part or the for you the upper part of the leaf and here's nothing so <clears throat> i will break my own rule and put some more ink here and i want a little color variation so i'm taking crushed olive i'm just putting some of that here and perhaps we can also use hmm. let's take some weathered wood And of course, this is all about experimenting. So if you feel there's not enough ink, then please add more ink. Or if you have the feeling it's too much, then just add not so much ink. Um, I have to say, I haven't done this method so often. I have made some experiments before starting this video. Uh, but 
I have not so much experience with this technique. So perhaps if you want to try that out, you have some tricks that you want to tell me or something that you have found out, then please leave a comment so that we can give each other some cool advice perhaps with this. And yeah, so um, do we want to have some Uncharted Mariner now? I'm really curious how that will come out. So I'm going to take one of these leaves here. I mean, what we also could... No, that's not possible. I'm sorry. That's how my brain works. I'm, I think, okay, that's not so good that the ink falls off from the leaves, but, and then I, my brain thinks, oh, you could do it like this or that. And then I think, oh no, that's not possible <laughs> because I haven't thought it until the very end. Yeah. So let's perhaps hold it over the paper here. So if it wants to fall down, then we can perhaps have the mess only on the paper and not on the table just like this and let's take some wild honey here perhaps that could be a great contrast with the uncharted mariner let's take the next paper that here and I also don't know if that was such a good idea to take so many different colors in one session here because <clears throat> even if you can layer oxiding on top of each other you have normally you have to dry the layers in between with this method with the photo paper that's not such a problem i have tried that out with other things i have also shown you how to get something like a jelly print effect with this method and with the paper and there i've experienced that it's not so the problem with having many different colors but i to be honest i haven't tried it with so many different colors in this sandwich uh, thingy here but yeah we will see what happens <laughs> so I want to have some of these hydrangea petals mm, and I think I want to take some speckled egg and some more bundled sage because in the German video that color combination turned out really really nice So let's put this here. And in the German video, I haven't had Uncharted Mariner. So perhaps it's also a nice idea to try that combination. And I have this darker blue here, so perhaps it could look great. Even if I don't know yet how much of that color that I can see there will stay here. So, yeah, let's see. And I also want to have this a little bit more, like, intensive. Also on the other paper. So that you also can see what happens if you um, put additional ink here. Even if that is not uh, necessary. I want to show you some different variations that you can get with this so that was bundled sage and i also want to have some crushed olive here because i think that's really gorgeous like this then let's take another paper and press this down here this and now let's just make a nice color here to 
the last paper here on top so that the back side of that is nice as well and when we have that we can take another of these acrylic plates the smooth side goes to the paper and this where is it oh my goodness yeah this with the slots is looking towards to you and the flat and smooth side goes onto the paper otherwise you get a grit to your print and then we are going to take some clamps and just clamp this together you could ooh, oh my goodness i'm so sorry you could also take some heavy books or something to put that on top i like to <coughs> take these clamps because then I can control better what happens here now and I can see here and also a little bit here can you see that the leaf already comes through here I can see how far this process um, has gotten when I can look through this and I don't have the chance when I have some books on top because yeah when I have to lift them up and look and then put them back that's a little bit annoying so I will just clamp this together like this and now I will have a really big coffee meaning <laughs> I will wait <laughs> or let me say perhaps half an hour or so um, until I take this apart but I can't really give you an exact time uh, period that you have to wait now because I guess it's depending on which photo paper brand you use uh, with this photo paper it goes really really quickly I mean with the real eco dyeing thing we would have to wait several hours now yeah um, these results that I have shown you I think they have taken me five hours to cook or something like that. And this is really, really fast and way quicker. So, um, but anyway, I don't know how to, how long to wait exactly. I have waited approximately half an hour with this paper here, but I think it's also a question of experimenting. Yeah. You have to try that out a little bit. And the results, of course, the same with eco dyeing with the real eco dyeing um, get really really differently with each session that you make and it's also of course depending on the amount of ink that you use and um, and yeah experimenting is always a surprise isn't it so i will come back in half an hour for you it's only a second and then we will see what happened here Okay, so here we go. It's approximately half an hour and a coffee later. <laughs> and even if this looks nearly like it was before, I can already see that here on the edges, the ink is like really intensive. Uh, and also, can you see this? Those little like really tiny yellow dots there. That is a really good sign that this has worked and that it's ready to open it um, and as I said I really can't tell you how long you have to wait with this but um, with my other experiments with the photo paper and the distress oxide inks I have made the experience that it is immediately there uh, in the video where I have shown you this jelly print effect, there you could see that really clearly. I will link all of the videos with this method down below for you. There's a whole playlist where you can check out all of the videos uh, where I have tried out different things with this method. And um, especially with this jelly printing idea, fake jelly printing idea, uh, I could see that when I lifted my pieces up, the effect was immediately here yeah and i think it it is not a question of time that this works but i went want to make sure that everything worked before i lift that up so i wait this 30 minutes so let's take that off and then you can see that you have this here and um 
I want to lift that up with a dry paper towel so that I don't get such a mess on my table. And the photo paper has now soaked the ink that, let's say, wants to stay in the paper. Yeah, So everything that you lift up is like too much. And we, we, we. let me just quickly clean the other plate so that I can put the paper there and show that to you in detail. So we can already see a really cool impression here. Uh, it's not so woo, bam, but I hope that we will get some better results uh, with the next sheets. But here you can see this gray like fog on the paper and that is from the oxidation of the ink so i will spray water don't panic we have used oxide ink but this is waterproof now when you go over this with a paper towel i i mean i could even rub over it like this and the ink will stay in here. The only thing, and I, I will do it like this so that you can see it. Can you see this smear here? These straight lines here. This is just uh, the part of the oxidation that goes to the paper. And that is too much here in this moment. So you can take this off and you can take off as much of that as you want. So if you don't like that, that you have this grayish kind of stuff there that you can take it off completely I will do that here as an example so that you can see the difference but you can also um, take off only some portions of that and leave the rest so that you get a more yeah like grungy effect on your paper so <clears throat> then let's take these off What is that here has happened? Not so much, but let's see. <laughs> and that's that's crazy. I mean, yeah. <laughs> what is that? It is a little bit strange. Why is this not so bam? In the German video, I have lifted the papers up and I was like, oh my goodness, what is that? It was really gorgeous. Let's see. Come off. Ah, okay. Here yeah, you can see it. Can you see this? This will get really, 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 really cool. But before I lift this up completely, I want to add something uh, additionally here to the edges of the leaves. Um, this here I have taken off to show you how it would look if you would skip the next step. But I thought <clears throat> here on those original eco prints, we have this like outline on the leaves. Can you see this darker frame here? And I thought perhaps there's a way to get that on this fake eco printing as well. And for that, I have taken out the ground espresso oxide ink refiller and I will now take a paintbrush and try to get some of this brown ink to the edges of the leaves. And for that, I don't want to move the, um, to lift the paper up completely. Otherwise, I can't get it back to the place where it was before. So I will do a little trick. I will take a pellet knife go in here so that I can separate the paper. I lift that up only half so that it sticks on the other half here. Then I will take my paintbrush and I will go over the edge of the leaf. So I'm putting the ink to the very edge of the leaf, not to the paper, but to the leaf. Really irregular. Try to get that as loose as possible, but you want to follow approximately the outline of the leaf. Then I will flip that back, lift up the other half like this and here I want to go in here to this like center of the leaf. I don't know if that's the right word but here where the stem is going into the leaf 
just like that. Uh, Brea, Brea. Carefully Brea over this. Then I try to get in between of the next both sheets, just like this. Ooh. <laughs> and I will do the same here on this ginkgo leaf. And also there, perhaps a little bit to the stem. You can play around a little bit. And of course you could also go really crazy with that, but um, a little bit of ink will be totally enough for this. Don't put too much of that here because we are working with the refiller and that is of course really, really intensive. So make sure that you don't have too much there. And if you have those like tinier leaves that, like these, mm, it's a good idea to put a little bit more of this to the center. I hope that I can get the same results or the same effect, not the same results. That's not possible because every print is unique. But uh, do you know what I mean? Um, the same effect, the same intensity like in the German video because that was really impressive so i will put that to the center and then i will go like a, in a star shape or something to the outside just like this bring that down and it really helps if you have your thumb or another finger in between of the both papers where you've just worked on to make sure that you um, get in between of each of those. I think that was not good English, but you know, let's lift that up here as well. I'm so sorry, you can't see anything now. I can't lift it up here on the bottom so well because of course here are all the leaves inside and that's not so easy to lift that up be very careful because you don't want to move the leaves in between of the paper now uh, otherwise you would get perhaps a relatively crazy result i mean that would be worth an experiment rotating the paper for example but uh, i don't want to do that here today because <laughs> i'm a little bit afraid I will just clamp that together again and just wait five minutes or so to make sure that the ink can move around a little bit in between of those layers. So shall I drink another coffee? A small one, perhaps. <laughs> See you in a second. So here we go. It's a few minutes later. So let's see what we got here. <clears throat> I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> so let's take this off. Oh, wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Look at this. Here you can see really, really good what I just have tried to say with this oxidation on top. You can see this dark green, the brown here, this yellow and all of the, those more like inky colors that now are in the paper and this gray stuff is sitting on top. You can dry this exactly as it is now or you can also take a wet paper towel because then you can control better how much you take off from here. And you could also, of course, take um, a wet paintbrush, for example, or one of these, um, how is that called? 
water brushes or just spritz carefully here like this. There are several different methods. Just do it like it's fine for you so that you can decide where you want to take this gray stuff off. I think on the background, it looks really, really nice here in combination with the yellow. Here I liked it not so much. That's the reason why I have taken it off here. And I also want to see what happened here if we get, uh, if we got a good impression of the leaf and the details of the leaf. And here, do you know what? I want to try to get this off only from the leaf and leave it on the background i think that could bring out the leaf way better so let's uh, take let's take a water brush and that's exactly what i have said a few minutes ago it's always the same with my brain i have recorded the german video and now i have some experience and now i think okay what else could we do and how could we make this better and i think this is a great idea to get the leaf itself really wet go around the outline of the leaf here then take a dry paper towel and lift this gray stuff off only from the leaf that of course takes a while but i think it's totally worth it Look at that. Now, what do you think? The leaf comes out so much better than before. And it's really, really, I think it's really gorgeous um, that this gray stuff is only on the background. So I will put that aside to let that dry. And then we can carefully take off the next one here. <sighs> Look at that. But here it's it's exactly the same. I don't like this extreme grayish oxidation. Perhaps it's a little bit faster when we put the water here and then rub over that with the brush. I'm also following the shape of the leaf. It's not so good like the other one, but I really like it. So let's take the next one off and let's first look here. <laughs> what do we think about this? <laughs> this is, it's, isn't it, isn't it absolutely fantastic? Let's take off everything of the oxidation here so that we can see these gorgeous colors below. I mean, oh my goodness, how amazing is that? And as you can see, we have a really great outline here. And the outline only comes because of the brown ink that we have added. If you, if you won't add the ink to the outline, this would be way more abstract and loose. I will show you a result because I don't know if I will get one here as well from the German video. So here you can see those hydrangea leaves. Here and here I've added the brown ink. And this is such a leaf as well. But as you can see, you can't see it so well because it has no outline here. And I think <laughs> that is a really big difference, isn't it? And here, look how cool that turned out. Look to the center of this petal. Isn't it just, it's it's just amazing, isn't it? I hope that we will get some results like, whoo, like that uh, here as well. Hmm. Here I like this grayish effect. So perhaps we can leave it here. And also here, look, um, the background is yellow and the leaf itself is yellow as well. And with this outline, it looks like a real ginkgo leaf is laying on this paper. And without the brown, 
you wouldn't see that so well. This would be one yellow area, I guess. <clears throat> so let me put this aside so that we can lift this up. Holy moly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's take these off and the cool thing is you could even use these leaves again uh, when you do the real eco dyeing method you won't get those complete leaves off from your paper you would get like really like like sludge or something and you can throw them into your trash can but with this you can just let them dry again and use them again and I think that's really cool let's take off what is too much here because I want to see this crackling campfire color here and I also want to show you the difference between lifting that up and leaving this like gray fog here here we had not so much brown so the outline didn't get so clear but I also like this half impression of the ginkgo leaf I mean everyone can do a full impression <laughs> so <laughs> be proud of some abstract things so now I'm really excited because here we have yeah And I think everything, oh, oh, everything that has a center turns out really well. I mean, this has a center here and it has these little slots and these little gaps here. And the ink can go through there and form this shape here. Um, on such a leaf, we, we, have this little gap here yeah of course and this here but that gives not so much for an interesting result do you know what i mean and that's yeah perhaps something that you want to consider when you choose which um, plants you want to use yeah i want to take everything of this gray stuff off on nearly everything mainly on the petals itself because they get then a really cool contrast and this um t this um those details come out way better it's like this let's do it here as well we have this and i'm a little bit uh, surprised how different that turned out i've not used the same colors from the ink but um, i think it's a good idea to have lighter colors in the background and then use the brown because here all of this yellow in combination with the brown gives not so much contrast like those um, lighter colors that we have there but I like both. I mean, it's also, of course, depending on um, on the journal or... Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Uh, I mean, it's depending on <laughs> where you want to put that or for uh, which project you want to use it. I can't believe what I see here. I can't believe what I see here. That's so crazy. That is so crazy. I mean, please compare this. No, not this. This has not so much yellow. I want to, I want to compare this with the yellow, uh, yellow color. Look at this. I mean, If I would post this on social media and someone who hasn't seen this video would see this, do you think 
he or she would believe that this is made with the eco dyeing method. I think, I think this is really, really close to this. Holy moly! Look at those details. I think that was the last one. Yeah. And here on the back side, you can see there is something. This looks also really interesting. I could imagine this as a journal page, for example. I mean, you could make a whole mini journal out of these papers. That looks really interesting. But of course, it's not comparable with this, I would say. And I want to show you what can happen if you use this grid block the wrong way around. Can you see this? Um, I will quickly explain what happened here um, so that you know that. And perhaps you want to consider um, doing this with purpose yeah, so that you get such a frame around here. This was an accident and also here. It was an accident, but I really like that. It looks a little bit like we had used a grid paper, like the grid was on the paper before, uh, but it isn't, of course, or it wasn't, of course, but this was made with the, the block here. And these little lines are these little slots in the block. And if you imagine how tiny those slots are, it's nearly unbelievable that you can see this here. <sighs> Happy experimenting. <laughs> Have a very great day and see you the next time. Bye bye.